Hello again, hello again, and welcome to the Stafford Media Channel. Woohoo! Let's dive right in and get started. So, in photography. One of the things I always look for are shadows. Now, we don't have shadows in every single um, image that you take, but it's kind of a neat thing to add to your images because of the fact that, remember, photography is a two-dimensional medium, meaning it's perceived on a flat piece of paper, or it's on a print, or it's on a computer screen, and so it's all going to be flat. But by including uh, interactions of light and shadow, what you end up getting is a really, really beautiful um, appearance of like you're looking into a window, if you will. All right. If you don't have any shadows, it sometimes um, does not really show the the three dimensionality of whatever subject it is you're trying to show. So that's why I gave you a linear shadows assignment. You're shooting shadows that fall in straight and curvy lines. And so that's kind of a cool and important thing. And so, um, and so, yeah, it's kind of a neat thing. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to get started right with this picture right here. All right, so, sorry by the way if you can hear a chainsaw in the background. Somebody's working on a tree. And the neighbors are working on a tree, so sorry if you can hear that in the audio. Anyways, so here is the image I'm going to do. I shot that at Hoover High School right outside of room 82. Not too far from there. So, um... So yeah, just going just goes to show you, you can find cool images wherever. So yeah, I found found this light coming through, this morning light kind of peeking right through, and these really cool straight lines. So I thought, yeah, that's really neat. And I love it the way this diagonal lines in here. So so yeah, I thought that was a, a cool image to do. So shadows, and I already I already made my selections. Remember, you're always thinking about um, three criteria whenever you are are doing your assignments. Number one, does it fulfill the criteria of the assignment? Number two, is it sharp? So check the focus. Number three, is it a good exposure? And so, yeah, I think I had all three criteria checked off there. And so, yeah, I decided on this picture here. And so I've already showed you how you make those selections. So again, I won't reiterate that, but figure out which ones are gonna work best for the assignment and then go from there. All right, so here it is. I also pulled up a little cheat sheet. And so I always do this, so you'll know exactly what I want you to do. So. Start with number one, download your pics and view them. I already did that. Number two, start Photoshop and open your images by going to File Open and navigate to where your pics are stored. Again, my pics were stored inside of a folder and I just navigated to them. I right clicked them and said open with Photoshop. You can do it that way as well. Number three, here we go. So it says to rename your file by going to File Save As. Your file should be named your last name. LS stands for Linear Shadows and you're gonna do like a couple of them. So this one will be one. And then remember it's a Photoshop document. So let me go ahead and make this go away here. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I can hear the chainsaw in the back. So put your name on there. I'm going to put Jay Stafford. I'm going to do an underscore. And I am going to call it LS for Linear Shadows. And one, because I'll be doing more than one, as will you. And you'll notice I changed the format. Literally, we're changing the DNA of the, the file by switching it to a Photoshop document. So I am doing that and I'm clicking and it's going in the exact same folder, which is in my picture folder. You'll notice that I have a shadows folder in there. Click right there that I already made. And so it's just going right in there. I had a, already had a couple in there. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. Haven't done a thing to it yet, but I am doing that. So what's next? Next we adjust the exposure by adding an adjustment layer, and you're going to use a curves adjustment layer. Create an S-shaped curve to adjust your brightness, contrast, and exposure. Let's go ahead and do that. So again, I can go here and click on this little black and white dot, and it says to do a curves. I believe I've showed you this already. You can just take this, and this brings up a property. So this is a property of whatever adjustment you're doing. So you pull down your black point a little bit, and then it gets too dark. Then you push up on your your highlight areas. Remember I talked about histograms. This is a histogram. It's just kind of a digital fingerprint. And so you can kind of just make some adjustments as you pull it down a little bit. You can do that. So something like that looks pretty good. That might be getting a touch too dark. So I can just push up on the white point there. You can also, if you want to play with, there's a little thing here called presets. And inside of your preset, you can click in here and you can say increase contrast. See, it's kind of like what I did, that S-shaped curve. You can go to medium contrast, something like that. Eh, that's probably not enough. You can go to 
Strong contrast. That's kind of like what I had. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's a touch too much, so I'm going to push it up just a little bit. Remember, once you put it in there, you can just make some adjustments. So I push that up just a touch, and I think that's pretty good right there. Next, we are going to further refine your detail in your shadows by going to Image, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. Play with settings to get the detail that you want in your shadow and highlight areas. So yeah, Image, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. So I am going to, you can do it right here, Image, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. This is a different one. I've never showed you how to do this before. So that's different. So it doesn't show a lot. But if you click on Show More Options, you can do this right here. So let's move this up out of the way here. And this, by the way, you won't find in your Adjustments tab like I've done before. So Shadows. Notice I can move this right here, and it pretty much just is going to adjust in my shadow areas. So you can kind of move these around. And it's just kind of bringing out some detail inside of these areas. I kind of like a little more there. You can also play with your highlights just to touch. Now, there's not a lot of highlight in here. But you kind of slide these around just a little bit. And I'm not getting a lot of change in this one today. So I'm going to click Cancel. I'm not sure why I wasn't getting much change in that one. But that's all right. Let's skip that light layer, and we'll come back to it. Okay, next, I'm going to Stamp Visible, Shift Command or Control Alt E. Use the Dodge and Burn tools to add detail in shadows or increase exposure in your highlight areas. So, um, Stamp Visible, Shift Control uh, Command Alt E, and we're going to use the Dodge and Burn tools. So, do that Shift Control Alt E. An e, so it takes a picture of all of that. And remember, we already used some of the dodge and burn tools, but it's right here, and this is the dodge tool. So if I wanted to lighten some areas, like for example, maybe I want to lighten. Kind of like how it's dark back there, but if you thought mm, that's maybe a little too dark, I can take my exposure and turn it down a little bit. And I'm also going to say. Let's get the shadow so you can decide where you want it. I'm going to turn the exposure way down so you can kind of just lighten up some areas right inside of these shadow areas right in here if I wanted. I'm going to make my brush even bigger. I did that with the bracket tool. And so if I wanted to lighten that up, I can do that. You may or may not like doing that, but that's a good way to add light basically into those areas. And it's kind of a kind of a cool thing. You can also use the opposite tool. All right, I can use the burn tool. If I said I want to make some areas darker, I can do the same thing. I again am going to turn my exposure way down. It was at 50%. And that's pretty abrupt. And I'm going to just use a big brush and I'm going to say, let's get the let's get the shadow areas. All right. So it's just going to kind of darken down. You know what? I'm almost vignetting this, aren't I? So we might be able to skip that last step. Vignetting, remember, remember, means kind of darkening down your edges. And so it really kind of, I'm going to get rid of that last one. I think that went a little too fast. I'm going to turn the exposure down to like 5%. And that way it'll go real slow in there. Notice I'm just kind of darkening down those edges like that. So it created some a bit of drama there. See how? So I just kind of darken down those edges. Next, number seven says to convert your image to black and white by going to Image Adjustments Gradient Map. This is a new one. You guys have never done this before. Select colors or values that create the look you want. Try using a slightly warm tone or cool tone. OK, a gradient map. All right, so we're in our layer palette here. We're going to go down here and look for the thing that says Gradient Map. This is like my favorite way to turn images black and white because it just makes it so rich looking. Now, I won't make you turn it black and white, but I want you to look at it in black and white. I love black and white photography. It's just so gorgeous. A famous photographer once said, um, if you look at color images, people tend to look for the color. It's almost like eye candy. But in black and white photography, people look at the image. They look at, they look at the image and what it's made up of. Um, the shapes, the forms, the textures. 
And so if you strip away that color, then they're, they strip away all that eye candy, and all of a sudden now they're just looking at the image. So black and white is really, really a gorgeous, gorgeous medium. Okay, so right uh, by default, you'll get this, or it'll sometimes go to the, whatever it was there previously. But if you click inside of it, you click, and if I click here, and then if I click here, I can actually bring up some tonality there. So right now this is red. You don't want that because that's horrible. But if you select a color, and now I'm getting into value. Color is is actually the U of it. So I'm talking about like the, the red. Value is degree of lightness or darkness. So if I click way down into here, I get just a hint of red. Not too much. It just kind of gives it a slight tone. And another thing that's cool is in the instructions it said, you know, you can sometimes play with adding a, a cool tone. So I don't think I like it for this picture, but sometimes it looks great if you have a little bit of a blue tone in the image. I think I, I, I think I like more of the warm tone for this particular image. And again, it should be almost completely black, but just a slight bit of tonality to it. And then click OK. And then click OK. And let's go ahead and look at my gradient map right there. And yeah, it's a black and white image. Now as I look at it, I think I might want to turn my contrast up a little bit. So you can go back into your curve. And if I double click here, it's going to bring up my properties again and really kick my blacks down even further. Or you can even, I'm not seeing enough of a change there, I can actually add in another one on top here. Sometimes if it's underneath it, it's not going to make a big change. So if I go back here, and go back into curves. This isn't in the instruction, but as I started clicking on it, I was saying, I'm not seeing enough. So if I go in here now, I decided if it's going to be a black and white image, it does need the contrast turned up a little bit. Don't want to go too high because notice how when I started pushing that up, it started losing detail in my highlights. So I'm not going to turn that contrast up too high. Fine line between enough and too much. I kind of like it like that right there, because now it has a real moody kind of feel. All right, let's go back to my layer palette. Let's get back to these instructions here. So next, we are going to sharpen our image. You do a stamp visible again, and then desaturate your image by going to Image, Adjustment, Desaturate. Now go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. We're going to do a setting of 10, click OK, and then turn down the opacity and change the blending mode to Overlay. That was a lot. So we're going to sharpen the image. We're going to do a stamp visible again. So let's go ahead and do that. Stamp visible is Control Shift Alt and E as in Edgar. It did that. Now it says to desaturate it. It's already desaturated, meaning it's black and white image. But if yours isn't, you can go to um, Image Adjustment Desaturate. It doesn't hurt anything for me to do it here. Although it did take that black and white out so i will undo that because i like that tonality in there but that's how you would do it and then i go to filter other and high pass filter other high pass and usually about 10 is good and so you go whoa that's like really weird looking i don't like that at all ah we're not done we're not done so then you click on Normal, and you click on Overlay, and then now it sharpened it. And usually this is too much, so you'll turn it down to, it really depends on the image. And, and notice I'm sliding my Opacity slider here to turn it down. Let's zoom in. Control plus 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 is going to zoom in for you. You can zoom out just a little bit. And it's like sharpest right in here, I think. So what it's doing is it's just kind of, if you look right in the excuse me, right in the highlight there, you can see how it just kind of, it creates edge contrast is what it does. And so yeah, it sharpens that up. So if I double click on the hand, it will go back to the whole thing right there. Okay, we're almost done. I am going to, number nine says to add a vignette by adding a layer, then use the paint brush on a low opacity, 25% paint in the, on the edges. I actually did this whenever I burned it because I was kind of burning in some shadows. But let me go ahead and show you this in case you hadn't burned your edges already. So I create a new layer. 
And I've showed you, you know, a couple different ways to add a vignette. And vignette is just darkening down your edges, but you can just create a blank layer. And I clicked right next to the little garbage can right there. And so I'll click on a brush and I want to make a big brush. So I make my bracket. I use the bracket to do that. Or if you click right here, you can select your brush size. Also make sure the hardness is all the way down. The hardness is the brush edge, how hard the edge of the brush is. And I want my opacity to be pretty low. I have 10%, that might be too low, 20% probably works. And I can just darken down that edge. Now I already did this, so I probably don't want any more. Yeah, I think that's probably a little too much, so I will just throw that layer away, but that's how you would do it on yours. And let's see what's next. 10 says to save your photo by going to File, Save, so let's do that. Um, file save or here's a cool a cool shortcut control s you should always save your work every five minutes or so because that way it makes sure that um, in case your machine crashes because it will at some point you're not going to lose like an hour's worth of work okay control s let me actually show you one more thing really quick there's a couple of, of little things this is a bonus right? this isn't in the demo but you'll notice how there's like a piece of gum that's down there well that's not cool Let's go ahead and take that gum out. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do that with... Now, you might think, hey, do you use the eraser? No, don't use the eraser. Several different ways to do it. Clone stamp tool is one of them. An easy, easy one is to use, if I click on the little thing that looks like a Band-Aid, it's the spot healing brush. And I can actually probably just, let me make my brush a little bit bigger. And I might have to do this in multiple layers, so... Um, why don't I do this? Let me undo it. And undo that right there. I'm going to do one more stamp visible. Control Shift Alt and E is in Edgar. So now everything should be right there. And now I can go in. I'm going to make my brush small so it's about the size of that. So yeah, there's a little piece of gum right there. And it's going to kind of beep. What it's doing is it's copying the tone and the um, and the texture in there. It's kind of like sampling it. Beep. Now, it's not always perfect. See how you'll click it and then it'll change. If you're clicking and, and it doesn't seem to work very well, the healing brush is similar, but what it does is it's letting you make some of the decisions. So you have to click the Alt key first, and you'll click right next to it, click, and then you'll go boom right there. And then it is going to grab some texture and the color or value from those areas right next to it. And so in that case, see, that actually worked better. Now it just looks like scuffed concrete and see there's some scratches in there. But you know, maybe see like that might be a piece of gum right there. Click Alt right next to it. That samples it and boom, there you go. You can make little things like that go away. Now, some people, some purists might say, well, that's wrong. That's not what's in the picture. I know, but I don't want people when they're looking at this light and shadow interaction to go, Oh, gum. You know, I don't want them to do that. I want them to look at the, the lines of the, the light coming through here and not get hung up on gum. Now, would I do it to every little spot there? No, because concrete isn't like a pristine thing. But people tend to go to their eyes. We're like fish, by the way. We look to white and light objects, right? And so if you have this little distracting piece of trash or gum, I'm okay with making it go away. But some purists would say, oh, no, you can't do that. So you figure out what you want to do. So I'm going to do Control S and go ahead and save that again. And then the last instruction says to finally go to Save As, your file by going to File, Save As. Keep the file name the same, but convert the file to a JPEG by changing the format in the Format tab. So we're done here. I'm going to do Control S one more time. And then I'm going to do File, Save As. And then I switch this one back to a JPEG. It's going to still go in my picture folder, in my shadows folder right there. I click save, and this should be 10 or higher. That's your compression. I click OK, and there it is. Done. Let's look at a before and after here. See if I see if I like this one here. Click, click. And let me find my picture here. Pictures and shadows. And let me just open this one with um, photos. So here would be the before. And here's the after. Before, after. So yeah, do I think I made the picture 
a lot more dramatic and a lot cooler looking? Yeah, absolutely. So that's what you're looking for, okay? That's it, shadows. All right, go forth and conquer. All right, see ya.